Hi, welcome to Conversation Corner. We're here for our August edition. I'm joined today by Jim Lehan and Ray Goff. Today we're going to talk about 40B housing. Uh, it's the state's law that allows uh, developers to circumvent local zoning and uh, create uh, dense housing. In exchange for that, they have to build 25% of those units as affordable units. Um, so today, I'm, again, like I said, I'm joined by Jim Lehan, the chairman, uh, former chairman of the Board of Selectmen. Jim's now the uh, clerk, I believe, is, the, is today's title. I've moved up. <clears throat> up and down and up and down. Uh, and we're also joined by Ray Goff, uh, a special okay. guest today, as Ray is our town planner. Uh, been with the town now for two, a little well, over two, two years. years. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, welcome. Welcome back. Thank you. Uh, so we finally, we finally strong-armed Ray into doing a show with us. Uh, we've been wanting to do this for a while, so we're glad we have this opportunity. So we have a number of uh, 40B projects going on in town, and uh, we've had a lot of discussion on social media, uh, the, the Norfolk Community Facebook page. I know there's a lot of discussion, Norfolk Net occasionally. Uh, certainly there's a lot of questions at Town Hall about uh, the different 40B projects. Um, so right now we have five that are kind of uh, reality and uh, in, at one stage or another. We'll talk about that in a little bit. And uh, we have a few more that are, are potentially coming down the pipeline. So uh, we thought it was a good time to talk about this. Um, so Jim, I know you've, uh, you've, been, you've known what 40Bs are for a long time. Cause <laughs> it goes back to the, the Borelli project uh, up on Town Hill. Um, so why don't, you, why don't you? OK, thanks, Jack. Uh, and Ray, welcome. Good, Thank to, you. good to have you join us. Chapter 40B is the uh, Comprehensive uh, Permit Act. It was passed in 1969. The purpose of it is to provide affordable housing throughout the state of Massachusetts. The state has mandated that uh, all of our communities here in the state, I think 350 some odd communities uh, in Massachusetts, need to have 10% of their housing stock be considered affordable. Uh, Norfolk is not at 10%. We're approximately 4.5%. Uh, just as an aside, we've been working on this for some time. Uh, we, we have what's known as the Municipal Affordable Housing Trust. Uh, they've put close to 20 units uh, into our inventory. Uh, so we've been working very aggressively. But as we build new homes, uh, it does nothing but increase the number, and that obvious percentage number goes up every year. Uh, the thing that I think is probably of most interest to people is that 40B allows a developer to come in here and basically circumvent our zoning. And by circumventing our zoning, I mean that he can create a higher level of density than we would normally allow under our zoning. And that can be significant. Ray's going to talk more specifically about some of the projects that we have before us. Uh, for many, many years, Norfolk only had one 40B project. Most people didn't even probably even know it was a 40B project, and that's the condominiums. I'm pointing as though you can tell where it is, but it's the condominiums that are on top of the hill. That was a 40B project, and that was what was known as a friendly project. The developer worked with us um, and made it really, I think, what most people would say is a, is a nice-looking project. We had no other projects before us, but uh, there has been a... Um, let's just say a rush of 40B projects to rural areas such as Norfolk. Uh, Rentham has a number of projects before it. Plainville has a number of projects. Uh, Walpole has already had a number of projects. Dedham, Stoughton, Canton, all of them Medfield. have had a number. Medfield. Mm -hmm. uh, all, of these, all of these rural communities such as, uh, such as Norfolk are now being uh, challenged by these 40B developments. Um, the main concern to us in a 40B development is that uh, they have the ability to create a, a very high level of density. Uh, that level of density can be significant. It can, the state allows anywhere between two and 300 units, depending on the town, uh, to be able to be built within a single project. Uh, the process that the, that the developer goes through really is circumvents the planning board. Uh, it does involve, to a certain degree, the Board of Selectmen, and Ray's going to go into more detail on the role that we can play, but really the role, uh, the governing body over a 40B project is the Zoning Board of Appeals. Uh, they are a semi-judiciary board, and they are the ones that uh, allow or disallow the project. Uh, we do have the ability to say no to a 40B project. However, if you haven't reached your 10 percent, then the developer has the ability to go to the state, appeals to the state, and the state can override us, if you will. Uh, it can be a rather complicated process. The main concern, and I'm, I'm leaving sort of the track here a little bit, but the main concern I think that we all have with this is that uh, it does impact our infrastructure significantly. Uh, if uh, we are, if we were to have all of the current 40B projects that are before us go forward and actually be developed. Uh, we're talking about a, a substantial increase in our housing. 
if Plainville were to have the same, and they already have a huge project over on 1A, um, actually it's Route 1, sorry, that has uh, currently been developed. Rentham has, I believe, three if not four projects, one of which I think is over 300 units or about 300 units. Um, these have a significant impact on our schools. Uh, while we certainly have room at the elementary level, if you take the issues we're dealing with here in Norfolk in terms of density, have the same issue in Plainville, have the same issue in Rentham, uh, you can see that the high school is going to have some major issues with this level of density in all three towns. So it's something that we're, we're doing our very best to manage and control, uh, but because we're only at 4.5%, we have limited capabilities to prevent them. All we could try to do is manage them. So uh, let me turn it over to Ray to talk specifically about some of the projects that you've probably heard about. So you talked about that meeting house uh, condo project. Um, one component of that project has not been built. There was an additional 20 units uh, that were approved back in, I believe, early 2000. Yep. And uh, there, those 20 units have uh, started. There's this, folks around town may have noticed that there's a building that did go up off of, uh, off of Beating House Road. Uh, so that's going to have uh, 20 units and five affordables that go on there. Um, another project um, that, that has been just recently approved was the Boyd's Crossing project. Uh, some people know it as 106 108 Main Street. And that's a 40-unit single-family uh, condominium project with 10 affordable units uh, being created there. Uh, there's another project which is a bit more controversial. Um, it's called Lakeland Farms, and that's off of uh, Cleveland Street. It's number 84 Cleveland Street. That's another 40-unit project um, with 10 affordables. Uh, we've received a lot of pushback from the neighbors uh, on this project. Uh, that's still pending before the zoning board and uh, we may get a decision in the next uh, couple of months as to whether it's up or down in terms of approvability on that. Um, we have another project that just came in and uh, they're seeking state approval at this point. It's called the Enclave and it's off of Village Green. Um, there was a couple of other proposals of that same project, a uh, property um, within the last five, six years. Uh, this project is a 56 unit, um, over 55 condo condominium development and they would have 14 affordable units that would come out of that project. Again, they're, state, they're, they're waiting on state approval and uh, they may start possibly going through the approval process with the zoning board this fall. Uh, just, just, just so, because that's kind of confusing the, the, the way that process works. Sure. So they go to the state, they get, they get a, a layer of approval. They come back to the town now and, and go through the zoning board process where we have the local approval. And as you said, if that's approved, that's that's really kind of the end of the process. Um, that's they, right. And then, um, but if they, but if it's denied at the zoning board, then they would go back to the state, um, not necessarily the same area, but they would go back to the state and uh, seek to over um, appeal the, the denial and, and would possibly be granted a, a permit from the state at the state level. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Well, it could be remanded so back to the zoning board too at that point, and yeah. then they could say, it, you know look at these things. And I think some of one of the reasons that uh, zoning boards do deny these special permits is that uh, it's hopeful that by creating this um, delay in the process that it, it provides us more of an opportunity to negotiate with the developer and come to a meeting of the minds where we, we cross the line from unfriendly back to the line of friendly and, and we agree on something that'll work as opposed to something that the developer just wants. That's right. And that's part of the process that why we might deny it. Mm -hmm. Um, one of the last ones that's, that's sort of on the books at this point is the village at Norfolk. It's a 36, it's a 2225 Rockwood <laughs> Road. And uh, this property is coming in as what they call a local initiative project. Uh, at least that's what the developer wants to do. He's actually meeting with the Board of Selectmen tonight, uh, tonight to talk about that and to see if the Board of Selectmen are open to the idea of uh, this local initiative project. Uh, a lot of work has been put in already um, by the developer. <coughs> Uh, we received some, some paperwork as of last night um, that was uh, quite lengthy and uh, so the Board of Selectmen do have to consider that one. Um, that's a 36 unit development condos with uh, nine affordables. Um, it's actually, coincidentally, it's the same developer that's doing Boyd's Crossing. Um, and uh, the, the way that that project worked with Boyd's Crossing, we had a very friendly development, although it wasn't considered a friendly 40B uh, as a local initiative project. It was a very friendly um, project anyway. Uh, that one is just starting, by the way, that uh, Boyd's Crossing. So you'll see there's some land that was been cleared 
in the last week at 106 and 108 Main Street. Yeah, uh, which so is just to the left of Old Town Hall, if uh, people don't know where that, that mm -hmm. is. But, uh, yep, yep. They're, they're going to be doing a groundbreaking uh, in September. In September, yep. So uh, folks 7th, are invited. I think September 7th. That's correct, yeah. So folks are invited to come to that, mm -hmm. too, if they, they would like to do that. A um, couple of, uh, th I have three future projects that I just want to discuss real quickly. And that is, uh, there's a property on Lawrence Street. Um, some folks know it as the uh, Buck Buckley Man Project a property. And there was a, a cleanup site for uh, some industrial uh, waste that was there. Um, the rest of the project, that has been cleaned up. The, the project is, they're talking about is, uh, is a rather large project with uh, the mix of apartments as well as uh, single family homes. Um, the other, another project is uh, 201 Main Street and uh, we currently have received some information on that, um, which would be eight units as duplexes and uh, two affordables would come out of that. And then uh, there's another project that's been going on and many folks have uh, probably heard dribs and drabs about it was at Southwood Hospital. Uh, so there's, uh, there's quite a few units that would be coming out of there, potentially 150 apartments would come out of that, as well as some single family and uh, mixed use. Yeah, but, but oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I, I'm no. just going to say that Southwood is not a 40B project Correct. just for folks at home. It, That's it, true. It, it is a large development, but it's not a 40B project. This is true. So. Yeah, this and is the true. reason I asked Ray to add that is just because it has so many yeah. affordable units, and, and we're kind of in a way treating it like a 40B. But yeah. so yeah. Yeah. Because, because of that benefit, though. That's, yeah. that's what we had talked about is you know, you're going to be getting 150 uh, affordable units out of this project, um, which can help the town's baseline. Yeah. yeah. As uh, we all know, there's still some negotiation. You know, there's negotiation in all, you know, other than Median House and Boyd's Crossing. Um, you know, there's still a lot of negotiating and, and decision making to be made on each of these projects. One of the things that <coughs> kind of, you know, learning as we go through the process, um, I mean, we talked about why towns obviously don't like, uh, don't like 40Bs, and that's uh, really around the, the density that, that the developers can come in and create. Um, certainly, you combine density with magnitude. I mean, if you get, you know, if you get uh, a small four-unit, uh, very dense uh, project uh, with one affordable unit, that's really, you know, pretty, pretty palatable. Um, versus getting, you know, 250 units with 25% uh, of those being affordable, that certainly is something that's going to create havoc in the town, um, a, a town the size of Norfolk, anyway. Um, so that's you know the, certainly the towns are get concerned about density and uh, uh, size, but some of the other th issues that we certainly talk about the zoning board really talks about is uh, is public safety and, and impact on uh, you know how it fits into the area and, and fitting into the area is a little bit is obviously very subjective, um, you know um, putting a very dense project in the middle of a very rural residential neighborhood is uh, something that gets discussed, uh, but certainly public safety, uh, you know, uh, how much sight line distance you have coming out of a driveway, you know, a, a condo complex or a, or a townhouse complex uh, coming out onto, again, one of our rural roads, that's certainly an area that gets uh, discussed a lot. And, sure. and we bring public safety officials in. Uh, certainly there's uh, engineers that get brought in, traffic engineers that get brought into the discussions. Um, so there's a lot that, that uh, you know, the zoning board goes through a, a long, thoughtful process yeah. with these, and it's not easy. Yeah. Uh, you, uh, you can't really use schools and things of that nature as reasons to deny uh, right. 40B projects, but public safety is one of the areas where you, you do have an opportunity to provide some influence. I mean, you take Cleveland Street, for example. I mean, Cleveland Street is a windy country road. And if you look where 84 Cleveland Street is, uh, you have a reasonably blind road, blind corner that comes down just before 84. So your sight line is very limited. And uh, you have, I've forgotten the number of units, you said 44 or 77, 40, or say 40 units. Uh, assume one or two cars per person, you have 50 cars potentially going in and out of there in a given day sure. uh, onto a road that really isn't designed to have that level of in and out traffic. Uh, it's an issue mm -hmm. and, and it's something that the ZBA takes very seriously and works with our public safety officials to try and mitigate. Um, so public safety is an issue. Ray mentioned that, that there was a gentleman coming to the Board of Selectmen's meeting tonight and, and just to kind of clarify that, as I mentioned earlier, the Board of Selectmen really are not involved in, in the permitting process of a 40B. 
but if it's a LIP, which is a local initiative project, um, we do become involved. And so why might we do that? <laughs> to uh, Why would the Board of Selectmen want to get into a situation where we actually work with a developer to build a 40B? And there are a lot of reasons why. Uh, and, and it starts with the basic understanding that we have a developer that we feel we can work with, that, that, that is an individual that uh, we're, we have a level of comfort that the project will be as we agree it will be. Uh, and uh, by partnering with the developer, it expedites the process for the developer, but it also gives us a direct line and a direct input to the state. So should there be areas of concern or disagreement, we, we have a greater say with That's the state right. under a local initiative project than we do if we're not involved. So in some regards, we become sort of a co-sponsor of the project, but we do so because it gives us a lot more influence over the project to keep it what we would probably define as a friendly 40B project. So uh, it's an interesting process. Uh, this will be our first experience with it this evening. Uh, it's certainly not a new process. It just happens to be our first experience with it. But uh, that's a reason why the Board of Selectmen might partner with a developer in that regard. Yeah. I mean, and, and certainly there's, there's <clears throat> that's a piece of property that we've talked about at town meeting. Uh, too many times, um, yeah. so we've wanted to create some density there um, through the planning board, you know, and through zoning. We've uh, we've wanted to create some zoning density. I mean, again, I'm not saying that this is this is the project we're going to, you know, we haven't really seen it yet, um, yeah. and we haven't talked about it with uh, the developer. But uh, but that, again, as I've said, the town has wanted to create some density there, at least at the town meeting level. So sure. it's, uh, yeah, there's, there's actually yeah, I mean, physical access to the train station is walking yeah. you know, right to the train. So you know, it, it adds that, that opportunity for intermodal transportation. Mm -hmm. And so people can get out of their cars instead of driving to, to parking lots. And, yeah. and they can get on the train and go to work to Boston. Um, we do as a community, though, have some ability to manage the process. Um, for example, we, I think, seven, eight years ago, developed an affordable housing plan, which we submitted to the state, which the state did approve. Uh, we're going to hopefully be updating that this year. Um, and not only do we want to get it approved, but we want to get it certified. Uh, when you get that plan certified, uh, if you meet a certain percentage, and I believe it's 2%, uh, that is in the works that uh, have been approved or are in the process of being developed, uh, you create what's known as a safe harbor, and it buys you time. It, it doesn't protect you or prevent someone from continuing to propose 40Bs to you, but it buys you time. So we're doing everything we can at a local level to try and manage the process. Um, this has all kind of hit us in the last two to three years, uh, and we're not alone. As I mentioned, Medfield, Rentham, Plainville uh, are all targets uh, sure. for, for these developments. Um, they're coming to rural communities that have good schools, that have uh, trains to Boston. Uh, we're targets for it, and we've got a lot of open space. Um, and they, they, they come with good news and bad news, you know, and, and the bad news is that it, it strains our infrastructure, strains our schools, uh, strains our resources if they're not managed correctly. So uh, you'll hear us talk a lot about them in the future. Um, I, I remember I, I, about maybe five years ago when we were talking about rezoning maybe four years ago, and we were talking about rezoning 25 Rockwood Road. And uh, we wanted to bring it into the business district so that it could be developed as a residential area. And uh, I remember saying in town meeting, I said, you know, if we don't do this, the only alternative that we leave a developer is 40B. And uh, someone got up in town meeting and said, well, uh, you're just using this as a scare tactic. Uh, you know, 40Bs aren't going to come to Norfolk. Well, they're here. <laughs> uh, and they're here in volume. Uh, it was never intended to be that. We, we knew we were vulnerable to this. Uh, and, and we knew that the day was going to come when we were going to be targeted by these developers. Um, uh, so we're just going to have to do the very best we can to manage our way through this. But uh, for those, it, it should be something I think that, that all residents that know and love this community and want to keep it the rural community that we all know and love, it's something that we all want to pay attention to because this, these projects, if not managed correctly, can have a, an impact on us. Yeah, certainly. Um, so I think that's. Uh, I think we're getting to the end of where we wanted to, what we wanted to accomplish. Um, certainly, uh, people are encouraged to continue to watch uh, the selectmen's meeting. Uh, certainly tonight, uh, August 23rd, we have that uh, discussion about the project at 25 Rockwood Road. Um, the Zoning Board of Appeals is uh, there on their schedule. Is they are continuing to discuss the uh, Lakeland Farms. That's the, eight, the Cleveland Street project. Um, and I encourage people again to sign up, you know, go to the website, www.virtualnorfolk.org, click on the calendar button over on the left, 
and you'll see a, a calendar will pop up and a, and a list of uh, public you know, meetings uh, <coughs> committees. And you can select a committee and then subscribe to, to see what their agendas are going to be. So every time an agenda gets posted for a committee, you'll get an email that, uh, of what that meeting is going to be. So if you're interested in land use, certainly sign up for the Planning Board, the Zoning Board, Conservation Commission. Yeah. Um, you're interested about what the selectmen do, um, dog hearings, and all those, <laughs> all those fun things. <laughs> Uh, sign up for that. Uh, certainly, you as we must, get, cl we get must, close to you town must meeting, have not attended the same one I did. <laughs> as we get close <laughs> to town meeting, fun. certainly we talk about the, yeah. the warrant a lot. So that's uh, a good topic. So again, that's a great way to stay involved, uh, stay informed. So. Yeah. Um, anything else, gentlemen? Uh, just feel free uh, to call any of us. Uh, I want to thank Ray for being with us. Uh, Pleasure. You know, our, all of our boards are manned by volunteers. Uh, ZBA is, is now front and center on a number of these projects, and they're citizens of Norfolk and volunteers. So uh, we're very fortunate to have um, what I will very clearly say is a professional uh, in Ray who uh, has uh, a good basis of knowledge in these types of initiatives and uh, provides guidance to those of us that uh, serve as volunteers. So we're, we're glad to have you on board. Thanks, and, uh, Ray's done a great job with us so far in the last two years. So. Uh, thank you for that. And uh, but stay close to this. Uh, call any of us uh, if if you need more information. Uh, we may not know the answers uh, because a lot of this is still to be determined. But uh, it is something that's here. It's something we have to manage our way through, and, and something we're working really hard on. We've had a lot of meetings this summer. We have a lot of meetings this summer, summer that that you don't see on TV. That that aren't uh, quorum meetings, just individuals meeting with various groups. Uh, on these projects, trying to uh, get in front of it at the early stages, uh, you know, while they're still talking about it and still trying to develop uh, sort of the framework of what it might look like, uh, we're, we're trying to be at the front end of that process so we can manage it early and uh, make them friendly from day one if we That's possibly right. can. Yeah. We cannot stop development. Um, you know, a lot of folks don't want anything built in Norfolk. Uh, that's not an option. Uh, if, if people own the land, and they follow the law, and they stay within our zoning, or they go 40B and circumvent our zoning, um, you can't stop it. So what we try to do is manage it uh, as best we possibly can. So stay tuned. All right. Well, thank you. And again, if, uh, to just repeat, Jim, if you're, if you're happy with what we're doing, give me a call. If you have uh, questions or you're upset about what's happening, call the selectmen. Uh, they'll be happy, <laughs> happy to answer your questions. So uh, thank you for watching today. It's, uh, uh, enjoy the rest of the summer. Yeah. And uh, maybe next month we'll talk about the, the water and, uh, and where we're going with the, the water development. Uh, that that will be another full meeting. <laughs> and we get, as we get closer to town meeting, which is uh, tentatively scheduled for November 15th, uh, I suspect that will be the day, but that's uh, mm -hmm. where we are today. Uh, we have a special town meeting coming up, potentially some zoning articles. Uh, we've got some community preservation uh, activity, I think, going on. Certainly some uh, financial uh, as we usually do, we have some financial uh, administration to do. So <clears throat> should be a good town meeting. And uh, again, thank you for joining us today. And thank you, Chris from NCTV, for, for producing us back there. You always do a wonderful job. So thank you very much. Uh, have a great day, and thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.